Um, I'm going to be talking about a project that I've been working on in Sierra Leone. Um, so my name is Colin. I work on the developer relations team at Solana Foundation. And um, yeah, there's a side project that I've been working on, which is a Web3 school in Sierra Leone. So when I say Web3 school, I actually mean like a in-person, in physical, in real life school in Sierra Leone. And Sierra Leone is a relatively small country in West Africa. It's on the coast, it's got beautiful beaches, very mountainous, it's a, it's a great place. Um, so in Sierra Leone, I founded a nonprofit organization called Christex Foundation. And the aim of this foundation is to actually like lead Sierra Leone through a blockchain, but more specifically, a Solana transformation. It just so happens that the first step of this um, transformation is education. And it's education from a technical perspective in terms of where we will train people on how to develop on Solana, but also from a non-technical perspective where we actually just introduce what blockchain is, what the use cases are, and kind of like the um, issues that it's able to solve locally in Sierra Leone. So the question you might have is, why are you building a physical school? Why isn't this like an online community somewhere? Well, for you to kind of understand why, you'd have to understand what the level or the state of infrastructure is like in Sierra Leone. So believe it or not, in 2022, there isn't like an area or region in Sierra Leone that would have 24 hours of electricity. Um, not only that, internet is something that is prohibitively expensive. If you ever want to feel sorry for me, after the talk, ask me how much I pay for a 10 megabit connection at my house in Sierra Leone. I'm sure you'll be surprised. Um, so with things like that, having an online school, we just don't really have the infrastructure to actually power that in Sierra Leone. So we really needed to have like the physical component. And um, almost like outside of that, I think people are not smart or, smart or intelligent just based on like where they're born or what region they find themselves in. I think some of the differences is just having the access to resources, the correct resources, and actually like an enabling environment and actually have the equipment to participate in this particular network. Um, so kind of like, how did this all start? It actually started off with a simple tweet. So this was me back when I was on holiday in Sierra Leone last year, December, and I was speaking to um, different people in the country, speaking to software engineers, to actually find out the issues that they were having locally. And more often than not, what I heard was about having like lack of opportunities. In terms of these individuals would go through, let's say, university um, or some kind of educational program, train themselves up, get some skills, but at the end of it, there is zero opportunity. There's like no opportunity for them to work in the field that they studied in. Um, outside of that, if they were one of the ones to be fortunate enough to actually find um, a position, the opportunity or like the um, uh, how much they will actually earn is very, very low. So what you find in Sierra Leone in terms of the minimum wage is actually very close to the average wage in Sierra Leone, which is ranging from about $40 to $60 a month. That's how much somebody has to live on in terms of food, rent, and just kind of like you can just imagine the general living expenses. And um, for somebody who is, let's say, a senior software engineer, or an engineer in Sierra Leone that has three to five years of experience, they'll be very fortunate to even earn a salary of like $300 a month. So this kind of um, opportunity is kind of, it, what actually struck a chord with me because it actually made me realize that this is why I was actually interested in blockchain technology in the first place. In terms of for sure it's gonna improve like the efficiencies that we have in traditional systems. People are gonna have like new experiences with Web3, but there's a whole um, region and a whole um, set of people who can actually benefit from this technology if we were just to embrace it. And it kind of made me think that it actually gives um, not just Sierra Leone, but Africa as a whole and emerging markets an opportunity to actually leapfrog the existing like traditional systems and traditional technology and actually embrace the technology of the future, which of course is blockchain and I'm sure most of us in the audience are believers of that. Um, so where are we now? So we um, thankfully received a grant from the Solana Foundation that actually allows us to um, complete our phase one. 
So what you're seeing is um, a construction that we started in the middle of April, and since then we were able to build um, the purpose-built like Solana facility in Sierra Leone where the education is going to happen. Um, we also did this in partnership with the University of Sierra Leone, and because um, the facility that we've built is actually um, on campus in the university. So yeah, construction started in April, and in about six to seven months, this is um, what we're able to accomplish. And by the time I get back in Sierra Leone by the end of this week, phase one will actually be complete, so we can actually start um, doing the training on site. Um, and one of the cool things about this facility is actually it allows us to have like um, a physical, like in real life experience of Solana. So kind of think of Solana Spaces before Solana Spaces was actually a thing. Um, so we can kind of like educate people from a non-technical perspective in terms of just by them coming um, onto the campus, they'll be able to experience Solana in real life. Um, so some of the pictures you're kind of like seeing is um, what kind of like the facility will look like in future phases. But as mentioned, at phase one, we just have like the core construction and we can actually start teaching on site. So um, this picture that you're seeing is actually one of the first lessons that we've had. So for the past two months, I've actually been taking the students, um, taking th through them like teaching uh, Solana and Solana development at my home in Sierra Leone. Because the construction wasn't complete, um, the students were like very um, energetic and passionate to start. So I opened up my home to actually start teaching them um, like two to three times a week for the past two months. Um, so now that the facility is complete, we can begin to like do that and move it on site. Um, so what's actually interesting is like we actually started off with about 100 students. And this is from um, the university kind of like nominating people that they think will be um, great or well advanced, and also just purely by word of mouth. And the idea is, is to actually bring this number down to probably around 12 to 24, where we can actually focus for this first two cohorts in terms of like forming like strong ecosystem projects in Sierra Leone. Um, so in terms of like where do we go from here? The first thing is actually to take um, students through the program. So as mentioned, the first step will be taking them from zero to actually being able to like complete bounties in the Solana ecosystem. So think of like the bounties you'll find on um, products like superteam.earn. And actually, um, just actually getting to that level will actually be a huge national success in terms of, again, as I was mentioning, the average uh, wage in Sierra Leone is about $60. Them completing like one of the simplest bounties on Super Team is probably like three, four, or even five X their current earnings. The second step from that is actually taking them from being able to complete bounties in the ecosystem to actually being hireable by um, different ecosystem projects um, like around the world. And going further from that, it's not just stopping at being hired, but as I mentioned, can we get to the point where actually we're forming strong ecosystem pro projects that are both like birthed and founded in Sierra Leone? Um, the second step will be partnership with teams in the ecosystem in terms of, um, so Solana kind of like optimizes for um, it being composable. So with that, it will be very interesting to work with different ecosystem partners to kind of understand the protocols that you're working on and actually how we can benefit from it in Sierra Leone in terms of like building on top of it and even to like a large extent contributing back to the protocol in a way that will enable us to solve the challenges that we have locally. Um, and of course, funding. This is funding for future phases in terms of not only um, improving the facilities that we have on site, but also begin to like focus on different initiatives that we have. It's like one of the obvious cases is just like payments and um, remittances, especially in Sierra Leone and the region as a whole. And what you'll find is the QR code that you can scan, which um, and our Twitter handle, which is Christex Foundation. Um, the QR code will kind of take you to a link for um, the Twitter for the foundation, my personal Twitter, and my personal Telegram, if you ever want to kind of get in contact and see how we can work together. Uh, finally, what we have is um, different artworks that were created by local artists in Sierra Leone. So these are artists that we actually um, onboarded and educated in terms of like what an NFT is, and we were able to like assist them in um, not only learning about what an NFT is, but actually converting the artwork that they have into NFTs. 
and we worked with um, our friends from Exchange Art to actually do um, a sale of these pieces of artworks. So each, for each artwork, there are 20 editions, and actually the sale of just one of these artworks would allow, um, sorry, would sponsor a student um, in the program for a period of like three to six months, and also allows us to kind of do, um, sorry, supply the basics in terms of having like tables, desks, and chairs, and the likes. Um, so that um, sale is going on literally at the moment. So please uh, scan the QR code and participate. And I guess one thing that I actually forgot to mention right at the start is that this school is actually completely free. So from now until like literally the end of time, um, the foundation will be open completely for free in terms of as long as you're interested in blockchain and learning to develop on Solana, you can come into the um, foundation, go through the program and learn Solana development for free. So thank you all for your time and yeah, hopefully we get to work uh, in some capacity in the future. Thank you.